My name is John Clare. This is John's Dark Art. And as always, you are very welcome. Now, today's piece I want to talk about is a piece I like to call a murder of crows because um, there's more than one crow in it. And apparently, if you put a load of crows together, you get a murder of them. So with this piece, it's fairly straightforward. I mean, I'll show it up to you here now. As you can see, three crows and a skull. If you've been here before, you probably realize this is not the first time you've seen a picture of mine that involves both skulls and crows and sometimes skulls and crows in the same picture. I thought having completed this recently, um, I thought it'd be nice to kind of share it with you all. So we're gonna do that now. Okay, so here we are. We're in Procreate and here we are with uh, a murder of crows. So as I usually do at this stage of the conversation, I'm gonna go into my canvas information and I want to go into statistics. And this piece took me 39 hours and 46 minutes to complete with a total strokes made of 11,767. So I like the last couple of pieces like Gay Icon and Ram Raid that we've done previously. This was one of the more involved pieces that I did. So what we'll do now is we'll hop into the time-lapse replay. Here we go, Murder of Crows. What I did with this one, and as I always say this, and I'm going to keep repeating it, what works for me will hopefully work for you. But when you're working digitally, the good thing about it is because you can resize and because you have that flexibility, you can compose. But the thing is, as I said previously also, the best thing to do is get your composition sorted out before you get really into the nitty gritty with the details because it will affect the quality of your drawing. So here we are. Let's punch in a little bit. And I'm drawing the skull here now. Again, using my scribbly cross-hatching style to develop my shading and develop, develop my tones and everything else. And finding the details and drawing teeth, which are pernickety awkward bastards to draw. But if you take your time with them, you know, it, I think it adds to it, you know. The, there's one thing about drawing skulls is no, you know, I know it sounds really obvious, but there's no two that are the same. And it's just finding the details and kind of bringing it to life, so to speak. So here we are. And just kind of developing the tone and developing the tone and developing the tone. Really taking my time with it. What you'll bear in mind, this alone, at this stage here, getting to this stage of completion with the skull, even that took me, I'd say, the best part of like 10 or 12 hours, maybe. With this one here, with this raven here, now initially, I, again, I was using references and kind of piecing the image together as I was going. But even then, I was still kind of wrestling with it a little bit. But once I was kind of, I mean, I, I had a clear idea of what I wanted. I wanted the this crow here to be perched on top of the skull messing about with it a little bit here resizing and again even in this stage it's like okay if i lose a little bit of detail this stage who cares you know because i'm still going to be working on top of it anyway so it doesn't really matter so kind of sketching it out a little bit and rough i mean with this also with this one here i mean because there wasn't a lot of detail in the, the original image i just figured to myself all right then if there isn't a lot of detail, then just go with it and kind of almost lean into it to a degree. I liked how foreboding this looked. I liked how kind of almost malicious and malevolent it looked. But also what you gotta bear in mind is if you want the crow to look convincing as to where it is, you gotta add shading, you gotta add depth and shadows. So what I did was using the original reference, I kind of worked out roughly where the sh where the shadows would be on the skull as the crow was um, perched on top of it. Now, did I get 100% accurate? Probably not. As long as it's near enough, I don't really care to be perfectly honest, because it's not really about being, for me anyway, my priority is not about making it look photographically real. That's the least of my concerns. I like the fact that my drawings look like drawings. I like the fact that you, whether it's with pixels or with pen and ink, if 
you look at any of my work over the years, I like the fact that you can see that this has been hand drawn or hand shaded in. And it's something that I kind of lean into personally. This one was a little bit more involved. It took me quite a long time to do this because of the, all the additional detail. See, with this one here, was it a, so if we go back a little bit, with this one here, it wasn't as important to me. I wanted this guy almost cloaked in shadow. And also you'll notice as well, I kind of whited out the eyes. Now, it's something that I've done previously uh, with previous drawings. If we hop back out a little bit, I'll show you. Now, sometimes I leave it in, like with this one here. Sometimes I don't, like this one here. You know, again, depends on my mood, depends on what I feel is good for the work. And in this one, with this one in particular, gone back out a bit too far there, one second. But with this one here, I wanted there to be a supernatural kind of look to the birds. I wanted the, the eyes to be weighed out because I liked that contrast. So anyway, if we hop back into, also, actually no, wait a minute. If we punch in, as you can see, if you look at the contrast here, now there was very little resizing with this in the end and you can see that it looks fairly pristine. Now with this one here, I went against my own advice a little bit and I, because at the time, I wanted to get this crow in at the top. So what I ended up doing, I, I ended up having to move this in order for there to be the three crows. It was, for me at least, it was important that the three of them be in there. In order for me to do that, and while I didn't actually resize it, I moved it. And because it, just the act of moving it was enough for it to kind of slightly impair the, it, it adds kind of, of a fuzziness to it that I'm not personally very happy with, but it was kind of, it was, a, it. what was more important to me? And I felt the composition was more important, but it's, this is something I should have really nailed down uh, much earlier on. And if anything, what this will demonstrate to you is that if you want there to be a consistency within all, right, within the images that you're using to, in your composition, especially if you're using layers like with this, then it's something that you need to bear in mind at the start of the drawing. Otherwise, if you don't want this to happen, then you need to be thinking about this from the get-go. And unfortunately, I didn't. So I think it, I think in a, in a small way, it's impacted the work. But that by the by. So the thing is like, as you can probably imagine, I wanted to keep all the detail in for this one. And it involved a lot, of, you know, it involves a lot of work. It involves a lot of, like the feet took a little, I mean, it took me a little while to be happy with the feet because I remember like when I was drawing it initially, this is how they kind of look to begin with. And I just thought they looked stupid. So I, you know, I got rid of them and redrew them. Because sometimes you need to do that. You do need, I mean, if you're not happy, don't settle. If you can change it, change it by all means. Because at the end of the day, you know, the hardest thing for me, and this is true probably for a lot of artists that I, I imagine, is that, you know, you're, own, you're, you're always your own worst critic, you know? And I think it's important that you are happy with the work in the end. If you're looking back on it and thinking, I should have changed that, I could have changed that, then if you can change it, change it. Even if you think it's finished and you go back to it a year later, so what? You know, I've got numerous pieces in my in my collection, if you like. Like, um, for example, let's have a quick look. Like with Kraken, one of my previous videos, I left this alone for about three or four years before I ended up finishing it off. What else have we got? Hugin and Mooney, like another one from a previous video. And I mentioned in that video, I'm not happy with them feet. And eventually I will probably have to go in and change them because I know I'm not happy with them. So, if you can change it, do. Why not? And especially, again, working digitally, you do have that flexibility at any time to go back and change it, you know? So anyway, let's hop back in. So again, filling out all the details, redrawing the feet because they look rubbish. And then working on the other wing. And the thing is, like, even if you're using references, 
don't worry too much about it being 100% representative of what you're drawing. No one cares. Not really. Don't get me wrong. If you're doing, I mean, if you're doing something that's like hyper realistic, you know, where you, you, you where you want to absolutely 100% represent exactly what you see from your reference in terms of it being a photograph or whatever, you want it to look like a photograph, then okay, fair enough. But if you're anything like me, sometimes it's just like, look, get it near and near enough. Uh, get it there or thereabouts. And if you do that, if you get if you get near enough, then fair, then move on. You know, while I'm not saying be lazy or take shortcuts, because I I'd like to think I don't do that. But at the same time, it's just a case of like, what's more important? Does it is it an exact representation of what you what you're referencing? Does it matter? No. What's more important is the finished work. That's where the priority needs to be. Um, also, you'll notice that with two of the wing, two of the tail feathers here, I left them pale. That was a deliberate decision because, um, funny enough, I do Twitch streaming. I don't know if you've heard this before. Uh, at John's Dark Art, by the way, if you're interested. I stream most weekends. Well, one one of the guys in my stream sent me a photograph on Discord. You know, showed me a picture of a crow with two white tail feathers. And I thought, at some, at some point, I'm gonna have to incorporate that. But wait a minute, I'm drawing crows right now, so why don't I just incorporate it anyway? So I did, why not? And I think it, you know, it's a little it's a little thing to add. Does it really make a different style piece? Probably not, but it's just not a nice little thing. To, it's a nice little way of inter... I think, again, this is the thing I love about Twitch streaming, is the interactivity about it. And someone can make a suggestion, and all of a sudden it's like, oh wait, that actually makes sense. That's, that's a good idea, I might actually incorporate that. And with the one up here in the corner, this one, because it's far away, I just wanted to make sure the shape was more or less right and that there was just enough detail in there to indicate this is exact, this is a crow and not a fecking seagull. So there you go. And that is a murder of crows. And now I think we're gonna round this out. So let's do that now. Okay, so that was a murder of crows. Um, a piece I'm more or less happy with and of course at this stage if you've watched enough of these videos you know by now that it's up for sale on my website www.johnstarkart.com so be up for sale two prices as per usual two sizes so a3 that'll be at 75 euro and a4 that'll be at 45 euros so if you'd like to go over to the website www.johnstarkart.com and pick up a print for yourself, help us in what we're doing here, help support the channel, in it, then that will be very much appreciated. So thank you very much. I think with this piece that I, I quite like it, okay? It has its faults that I mentioned already, but I quite like it. I like the, the menace of it. I like the forebodingness of it, you know? And, you know, the, the idea basically came from the, commonly used verb now i'm never too sure to describe a collection or a group of crows you know so murder of crows an unkindness of ravens a parliament of rooks i love all of that i think it's great it's things like that it often gives me the idea to create a piece you know it's like her with the eaten crow piece i'll bring up here for you now that i showed here a few weeks ago same idea it was just like i heard this t this american term eating crow as in eating humble pie and i thought that would be a cool idea for a drawing so i created it um sometimes you know listening to norse mythology some t <laughs> you know again i don't need to go into how much i love neil gaiman i, I think i've eulogized about that man's writing in the past it's just like constantly developing your, um, constantly developing my sources of inspiration and being able to turn an idea and make it a reality. That's, I think, the one thing that's great about being an artist, being able to take an idea and realising it, you know. I think this brings me on to this whole subject that I've heard mooted around quite a lot. I mean, I remember one particular individual who shall remain nameless turned around to me at one point and saying that you're not an artist, you're a draftsman. And I think that's quite peculiar. This is coming from someone who regards themselves as an ideas person. I think more often than not, people like that are probably operating, and I'm, I am assuming here, obviously, that they're operating from a position of jealousy. It's not because I'm some great talent. I mean, I'm good at what I do, but it's, I'm not the only one. 
again, go on Instagram, go, go online for more than 10 seconds and you'll see any number of stupidly talented people creating amazing artwork. And I'm not really one for saying who's better than who, or who's better than me, or I'm better than them. I don't really like that kind of talk because at the end of the day, we're all trying to create something. You know, we're all, I don't really necessarily see art as a competition because art isn't, ob- is, is not objective, it's subjective. I don't like, I don't like talk of, I don't like hearing people say what is art and what isn't, who's an artist or who isn't. Because to be honest with you, if you're creating something, you're an artist. What field you're creating it in is kind of irrelevant, whether it's art, whether it's video games, whether it's movies, whether it's writing, music, whatever the art form, you know, you're an artist if you're creating something. I, th- I think it's important to recognize when someone's being creative. And obviously there's different stages to that, but I think art creativity should be encouraged. Growing up in the UK, right, the emphasis is very much on reading, writing, and arithmetic you know, the three R's as they're called in the UK, with creative subjects like art, music, uh, English literature, you know, seen as very much secondary subjects further down the pecking order. Well, if you want people to be creative, they need to be creating. You know, that's not to denigrate people who are good at maths because it takes an incredible amount of creativity to be a great mathematician. Look at, were it not for like Albert Einstein and him daydreaming to come up with the like with the um, E equals MC squared and the grand and the theory of relativity. You know, that 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 takes the amount an amount of creative genius that I will never come close to matching. I don't know. I think yes, art is subjective. If you call yourself an artist, you're an artist. Now look, I may not like your work, but that doesn't stop your work being art. That doesn't give me the right to turn around to you and say that you're not an artist any more than it gives you the right to say that to me. I think what it should be is a case of if you're creating, you're creating. If you're making art, you're making art. If you're making art, you're an artist in whatever your field and at whatever level you're at. Some people are more proficient at drawing than others. Some people are more proficient at painting than others. I mean, the one thing that I, as an artist, do struggle with is color. You know, I prefer black and white. I, I, I'm comfortable in the monotone. But when I start bringing in other colors, it's, you know, color theory is something that I wrestle with. I'll admit that. Um, and it's something that I need to develop and improve upon. Because I may be 42 years old, but that doesn't mean I'm the finished article. And the only time you're the finished article is when you're pushing up daisies. Spare that in mind. I think what the crux of what I'm trying to get at with this is that, I, you know, we should be kind of celebrating creativity and we should be celebrating arts of any description. And I do know there's this kind of uncomfortable dissonance between art and money, which is something that we've been wrestling with for eons. And I don't think it'll ever truly go away, whether it be. I mean, I mentioned in the previous video about how I feel galleries exploit artists and how artists often undervalue themselves. And I'm no exception to that. Sometimes I've overvalued myself, sometimes I've undervalued myself. But the thing is, again, because of the the kind of the nebulous nature of art and what it's worth in the marketplace, a lot of it attached to name recognition. And you only get name recognition when your name is recognized. So you need to keep working on that. Why do you think I'm on here? Uh, creating these videos because I want my name to be recognized so my work gets recognized so my work then has value in the marketplace because I'm looking to sell prints you know it's as simple as that you know and I'm pretty open about that you know I want to make a living doing what I'm doing I think yeah creativity should be value but it's not just about um, monetary value you know it's va- it's valued in its contribution towards culture it's valued in its contribution towards the human race in general you know creativity in art is incredibly important do i think it should be given more do i think it should be given more value in term, in at an educational level 100 i think creativity is incredibly important especially in children and it's something that needs to be fostered and encouraged do i think it's valuable in terms of culture in general yes it's incredibly important because this is how we express ourselves you know, whether it's through language, whether it's through visuals, whether it's through music, whatever, whether it's through mathematics, there's any number of ways in which we express ourselves. And I think it's important we allow ourselves to do that. 
and it should be valued. Unfortunately, you know, in some quarters, it's not as valued as, as it should be. Like I said, with education, I just think art has so much value and gives so much that it should be, again, I don't think it's not that it's, it's not recognized as important because when it is recognized as important, it is. I don't know. It's something that I'm going to be wrestling with for quite a while, I think, because of that dissonance, whether it's financial, you know, how do I price my prints, for instance, on the website? You know, I wanted to try and keep them fairly affordable so people can would feel that I, I wanted my work to get out there. And I wanted my work, and I felt that by selling prints at limited volumes, that that and by offering quite a few of them, that there would be the opportunity for people to kind of, you know, take the plunge. I think what I'm saying is art should be valued. And I think for the most part it is, but it should be valued more. I think it's our single biggest contribution. It's our single biggest, it's, it's, it's what defines us as human beings. It's what makes us different from the rest of the animal kingdom. And it's what makes us human. So, I don't know. I think I'll leave it there. Hopefully this diatribe has been somewhat inspirational. I don't know. But uh, hopefully it encourages you to make work of your own and share it with the world in whatever way you see fit. Anyway, my name's been John Clow. This has been John's Dark Heart. And as always, you have been very welcome. Till next time.